Hi everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about quadratic inequalities. Now a quadratic inequality is different from the inequalities you've had before. I bet you couldn't have guessed that, right? <laughs> All right, so the ones you've had before are probably like 3x plus 4 is less than 7 and you're having to, you know, to graph that on a number line. The other one you may have seen before is where they have compound inequalities and that's where you would have things like 3x plus 4 is greater than 7 or x is less than 2, things like that. Those are different topics, different videos, links are in the description below. Now these are quadratic inequalities and that's where we have x squareds. x squareds are involved. And this is going to be the highest to use the proper term order of magnitude that is in the equation. So no x cubes to the fourth to the fifth, nothing. x squared has to be there and it also has to be the highest. So that's our first setup. Now I should say factoring is going to be a big part of this if you are rusty on factoring and that's things like anything from our say x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0, factoring that. If you, you, know, you add a negative there, if you add a number in front of it, all of those variations, if you are thinking, oh, I'm not sure I remember all those, please, 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 I'm begging you, please go to one of the videos below and refresh your memory on that. It's going to be so huge in these sort of things, and we're not really going to spend a lot of time on that. I'm just going to assume you know it. The biggest thing for these quadratic inequalities is we're saying is something above or below the x axis. Let's say I had a parabola that looks something like this. Let's say it goes through the points 2, 0, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and goes through 7, 0, and it looks something like that. And I asked you, where is y greater than 0? Well, you being knowledgeable algebra students that you are would go, okay, well, y is greater than zero up here, the top half, the part above the y, um, excuse me, above the x axis. That's where y is greater than zero. So what portion of this parabola is in that area? Well, it's from here to here. It's from two to seven. Does it include two and seven? No, because we want where it's greater than zero and at two and seven it's equal to zero so it'd be the parts in between those two well what if i asked where is y less than zero you go okay well i know it's the bottom half of the xy graph so it's everything down here is where y is less than zero so for this parabola it's going to be this bit and this bit so it's where x is less than two or where x is greater than seven because it goes on forever you know, in both directions. Now that is the principle we're going to be working with. We're going to be getting it down to this point where we have our graph, we know where its zeros are, and we're gonna say, depending what they ask us, they could ask us where is y less than zero, where is y greater than zero, where is y less than or equal to zero, where is y greater than or equal to zero, and we're going to give them the answer based on whether it's above, what parts are above, or below the x-axis. So that's the crux of this, that's the goal. Now there's gonna be some little steps along the way that we're gonna have to follow, of course, to get to that, but that I wanted you to see where our, our end goal is, the end game, as it were. Now we're doing this first by looking at a graph. There is also a way to do it just by looking at the equation and by plugging a number in. Your teacher is very likely gonna ask you to do that too, so we're gonna cover both ways. All right, so let's start with the full equation that you're going to be started out with, something like this. Say x squared minus 9x plus 20 is less than zero. Now we're going to graph this equation, x squared minus 9x plus 20 equals zero. So to graph this, we are going to factor it and I'm going to ask what multiplies to 20 and adds to negative 9. That's negative 4 and negative 5. So factoring would be x minus 4, x minus 5 equals 0. Again, if this does not look familiar, please, please watch the videos on factoring first. 
So I split that up, x minus 4 equals 0, x minus 5 equals 0, meaning that x equals 4 and x equals 5. Now in a normal, you know, graphing situation, then we go, okay, so x is 4 and x is 5, so there's my two zeros, and then I would find the vertex, and I would graph that, and then I'd find a couple points to the left and the right of those two, and graph them, and I'd have a pretty accurate idea of what this um, parabola looks like. Unless your teacher spells out that they really want you to be hyper precise and hyper specific with this graph, it isn't really necessary for these less than, um, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, these inequalities. It's not really necessary. All that we really need to know at this point is, does it open up or does it open down? When we're doing it graphically. Well, we look at our x squared and it is positive. Positive parabolas open up. If it were negative, then it would be opening down. So we know this one opens up. Like that. Okay, so now we look at, get rid of that little extraneous, we now we look at our original problem and we want to know where does this equation, which is being represented by this parabola, where is it, if I plug x in, where do I get a number that's less than zero? If I plug in this value for x, I get, I plug it in, I go through that math, and I get something less than zero. That'd be the y. Is that y value less than zero? Where is that going to be? Well, we said less than zero, and y is less than zero, it's everything down here in here. So what part of this graph is in that area? Well, it's between 4 and 5. Now, is it including 4 and 5? No. 4 and 5, if I plug 4 or 5 into this equation, I'm going to get 0. It would be equal to 0. We don't want that in this case. We want where it is less than 0. So it's going to be where x is greater than 4, because we're starting here, we're going this way, and where x is less than 5. Now I wrote this over here using the equals to really show you what we're doing with the zeros. Uh, just be advised, many books and teachers are going to, instead of, you know, doing these equals, they are going to write, you know, they're going to use that, they're going to continue using that less than sign all the way through. Frankly, that's more likely. I have seen it both ways. I've seen math books use both methods to teach. So just be aware. <laughs> Still, it's the same sort of thing. The reason I prefer to do the equal sign is because look at this right here. You get as your answer, x is less than 4 and x is less than 5. And it's very tempting for a lot of students to think that is the final answer. But is it? No, it isn't. Look, x is less than 4 here. x is greater than 4 in the final. So I think it can be a little distracting and I think it can cause problems, but just be aware a lot of them are going to want you to write it out like this instead of using the equals to solve, to graph it, just FYI. Okay, the other way to do this mathematically to figure out, like let's say you're not being asked to graph it and they don't want you to just say, well, I know it's opening up because it's positive, so of course it's going to be between the four and the five. Yeah, it usually doesn't fly. Uh, most teachers are going to want you like, show your work, prove it. I feel your pain. I've been in that position where you're like, I know it's the right answer. Why do I have to write a page worth of explanation? I get it. I get it. You got to do what you got to do. So in this case, we're like, okay, we know the zeros are four and five. We go, hmm, is it going like this, where this is four and this is five? And so it'd be all this bit down here. Or is it going like this, where this is four and this is five, and we're just talking about what's down there. The way you do that is you pick a number between the two zeros. In this case, the zeros are 4 and 5, where x is 4 and where x is 5. There isn't a whole number in between them, unfortunately, so I'm going to use 4 and a half or 4.5. So you're going to plug 4.5 into this equation. So 4.5 squared minus 9 times 4.5. Let's zoom out just a little bit, scoot over. Okay, plus 20 is less than zero. 
when you do all this math, you're going to get negative 0 0.5 is less than 0. Is that statement true? Yes, it is. Ding, ding, ding. It is true. I'm so happy. Because it's true, this is the section where it's less than 0. That's the section we want. That point is in the section we want, which tells us it is this one. Because that, you know, there's our x-axis. There it is in this one over here. So 4.5 makes it true. It is less than 0 at x equals 4.5. So it must be below the x-axis. It is in the area we want. When you write your answer, it is very likely that you're going to at some point have them ask you to write it in interval notation, which hopefully you've seen at this point. I don't have a video on interval notation yet. If that's something you'd like to see in a future video, please leave a comment below or anything related to this, actually, if you think like um, cubic inequalities or something like that, if that's coming up in your class and you'd like some help with those. So back to this interval notation. This is our answer. X is greater than 4. X is less than 5. They may actually want you to write it like a combined little compound inequality like that. Or if it was interval notation, because these are greater thans and less thans, not greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, you'll have a parentheses in the 4, in the 5, then the parentheses, and that's the interval notation for that answer. The couple little oddballs to look out for, they're actually, they actually make things easier. It's not harder, it's easier. At first you might go, what am I supposed to do with that? But it's not, it's not harder. I promise. It's actually like, woohoo, this is nice and easy. So let's say you are given a, uh, a graph, you know, an equation, and the parabola is up like this. And they want to know what are the values that make it less than zero, or the values of x that make it less than zero, or y is less than zero. And you're like, there's nothing. There's nothing less than zero. What do I do? I'm like, that's the answer. There are no values. There's no numbers. None. You're done. That's it. You don't have to worry about interval notation. You don't have to worry about your greater thans or less thans. It's nothing. Same one. What if they said we want where? What values of x make y greater than zero? Here you would go. It's all of them. It's all real numbers because literally all of it is in this area up here where y is greater than zero. And you're done. You might be asking, how would you know if it's like this? If you're not, especially if you're doing one of those where they want you to do it mathematically and not with a graph. Um, it's when you get an imaginary number as your answer when you're trying to find the zeros. Like if you cannot factor something, um, say, for instance, you have x squared plus 1 is greater than 0. What values of x make this true? And you go, oh, well, if I try to solve this, I get x squared is greater than negative 1, and then I would take the square root of both sides, but I can't do that. I'm going to get an imaginary answer. Or if you use the quadratic formula, link below if you need that, uh, if you get the quadratic formula and you get an imaginary answer for that, anytime you're getting an imaginary answer, it means it's either like this or it's down here somewhere. It's not crossing the x-axis. There are no zeros. Well, if you're just doing this mathematically and you're not allowed to graph it or they don't want you to graph it and you're like, well, which is it? Is it up here or is it down there? Is it all numbers or is it no numbers? Well, Let's try this one right here and say, without doing a graph, I want to know, is this all numbers or no numbers? Well, just pick any x because you know it doesn't cross the x-axis. So it's anywhere. It's either all up here or it's all down there. So you can pick any x in the world and plug it in. It doesn't matter because it's either going to be all or nothing. I'm going to pick 0 because that's really easy. So 0 squared plus 1 is greater than 0. 0 plus 1 is greater than 0. 1 is greater than 0. Is that true? Yes, it is. So it is all real numbers. That's it. You just pick any x. Once you know it has no zeros, you pick any x, plug it in, and if it is a true statement, then it's all numbers. If it is a false statement, it is no numbers. If this had been the other way, if this had been a less than, again, I can pick any number in the world. It doesn't matter. Let's pick five. 
5 squared plus 1 is less than 0. 25 plus 1 is less than 0. <laughs> Looks like a K, doesn't it? 25 plus 1 is less than 0. 26 is less than 0. That is not a true statement. So no numbers work. And that's how you'll deal with those. Um, when you get an imaginary for the zeros, which means there are no zeros, plug any number in. If it's true, it's all numbers. If it's false, it's none of them. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, if it was helpful, useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.